In 1981, the arcade scene was very big. It was an absolute magical place. It was sort of like my second home in a way. You didn't know what to expect. You'd walk in and there was always a chance there'd be a new game out there. And the game would arrive and you'd have like people stacked up and lined up waiting to play. You could not get on that game. There was a line out to the door. And it was just a different era. Send your playing techniques or high scores to the International Scoreboard in the Tumwa. I was the official scorekeeper for the video game industry. Here are the top finalists. We had a lot of phone calls and then one day it was from someone with Life Magazine who wanted to do a story on video games. The 20 best video game players in the world getting together. And there's people from all over, California, Florida, I think one guy's from Alaska. These are the all pro guys. So video games, this is the equivalent of the Sgt. Pepper's album. Are the players ready? All right! Everybody wanted to be better than everybody else. Everybody wanted to showcase. If you couldn't play a video game, you were nothing. I used to go and play a game to destroy the game. To an arcade owner, I am the worst nightmare. I could walk into a strange arcade and step up to a game, and I could have half an arcade full of people around watching. Everywhere they went, people poured attention on them. Girls fell in love with them. Adventures happened to them. If you don't have a t-shirt, you know about it. I've never seen groupies before. Yeah, there were groupies. We were all young and, and crazy, and we've all had a chance to grow up. We turned into productive members of that were non-violent. Video games made me feel important again. They probably did impact each other's lives. Back in the day, your dad was a legend. He was known worldwide as the guy that was able to rock this game like nothing else. You can teach a monkey how to play a certain number of rooms, but you cannot teach a man how to play berserk.